All right. Well, glad to have you with us for this uh, portion of the show. This month marks the 20th anniversary of Notre Dame's 2002 College World Series team. And that group, of course, was the first Irish team to get to the College World Series in 45 years. More specifically, June 17th marks the 20th anniversary of Notre Dame's come from behind win over number one ranked Rice at the College World Series. It was a do or die elimination game. And we've got the three guys who were the main contributors to that ninth inning comeback in Omaha, Rosenblatt Stadium in the College World Series. Guys, I've had all three of you on at different points over the years, but by yourself. So this is the first time we've tried something like this, having you all together. This is pretty cool to kind of see your faces all together. Glad to have you here today. I'll do the formal introductions in just a second, but glad to have you uh, all uh, with us today. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks, Sean. All right. So, to it. so let's let's go through the uh, like I said the formal introductions. We'll just start at the top of the order. Notre Dame's leadoff man. He was batting 442 with a 1056 OPS going into the College World Series. An All American. He was drafted by the Oakland A's about a week before uh, the World Series. He of course is the center fielder Steve Stanley. How are we doing today, Steve? It's great to see you guys. It's great to be here. It is. It's a little funny doing this on video. I've never, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> doing it on radio, but it's great seeing. That's you right. Guys. It's great. Great to see you, Sean. You know, everybody has aged well. My parents, when we came up for the uh, the 20th anniversary weekend, my, my my mom just kept saying, "Everybody lost weight." I mean, it's not like you know, it's incredible. I mean, everybody's you hard. Like, You're a very I'm good. <laughs> You're a very in-shape crew, though. I was pretty <laughs> impressed, you know. So, all right. Next, we've got the two-hole hitter. He was leading the entire nation with a 714 average in the NCAA tournament entering the College World wow. Series. He was a sophomore that season, drafted by Milwaukee two years later after his senior season at Notre Dame. Steve Solman is with us. How are you, Steve? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Just sitting in uh, in an office on campus as we speak, uh, in the, in the uh, development office here at Notre awesome. Dame where I work. And of course, you are both Steves, so I'm probably you know I usually just call you Steve when I talk. I'm just we're, we're probably just going to have to go Solman and Stanley, you know, just to differentiate as we go through this thing. That'll yeah. be that, that'll be that'll be good because that's what they call us on the team too. So. That's true. That's very true. All right, and uh, last but not least, the number three batter for the Fighting Irish who uh, led the Irish with eight home runs going into that game in Omaha. Second most RBIs with 54 on the season, an OPS for the season of 1136, also drafted by the Oakland A's that year, Mr. Brian Stavisky. How are you, Brian? Good, Sean. Thanks for having me, and it's great to be on with Steve and Steve and uh, talking about 20 years ago and what we did you know, with that great run. That's exactly right. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go through, got some of the, 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 you know, the radio clip, basically the entire inning. We're going to go through it, get your thoughts on it. Uh, you know, again, we, I, I haven't tried something like this before, but I thought it would be a lot of fun with this being the 20th anniversary and everything. So I guess just to start with, though, let's just go around the horn. And I, I guess we can just, you know, since we got the batting order, you know, just any time I throw it up, you know, you can you can just go in batting order, I guess. But, you know, just any like you're going into that game again, it's an elimination game, College World Series. You had lost your opener to Stanford two days before that, but you were coming off the big wins, you know, at the Super Regional over Florida State a week before that. Just your, you know, thoughts, feelings, emotions, whatever you had going into that elimination game against Rice that day. Well, I'll tell you the first thing that that. I always think about is in the four years that I played at Notre Dame, um, these guys were with me the entire time. It, we had never gone to and out ever. So, it, you know, there, there was something built in us where we, we just knew we were going to give even, an even better effort the second game than we did in the first. And I think there was also, you know, some jitters in that first game. All of us, you know, it was our first time at the World Series playing in, in front of 25,000 fans. I, I had never played in, in anything like that, and I don't know if these guys had either, but I can tell you it was the only place I'd ever played that felt like I was in a football game environment, like a, 
at Notre Dame Stadium. And so there was some jitters, I think, for everybody. And uh, we knew that, you know, in the second game, we were going to give really just an, an, a great effort. And we, we felt confident. Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo everything that Steve said. Coach Maneri always talked about that. I, I remember going back to, you know, I was only a sophomore at that point, but even freshman year in the regionals and in the, in the Big East tournaments and, and things like that, Coach just always saying, like, hey, we never go to and out. Like, that's just not in our DNA. Um, so having that confidence, you know, feeling good. I mean, going up against the number one team in the country again for the, the fourth time in five games, I guess it was. Yeah. Um, you know, so it was only a ranking at that point. And I think we all knew that it, everybody was as good as everybody else. And it just uh, came down to putting up some good at-bats and, and getting a good outing from Niesel and and just doing what we knew we could do and, and, and getting the W. Yeah. You know, and just like they said, I, th I think, you know, one of the things that was a big, you know, it was exciting, but it was new for us to go to Omaha, um, even all the way through, um, you know, the regional that we hosted, then going to Tallahassee, even though we played Florida State and they were number one, it was just, you know, on a college campus. And even though it was in their house and then, you know, we all have seen Omaha and we, we grew up wanting to go and play there. But I think that was a little bit, you know, just getting there and seeing, you know, what it was like, you know, and then trying to play, you know, against all these other top teams. You know, we played a good first game, even though we came up, I think, one run short against Stanford. So we knew yeah. we, we could play with anyone. We beat Florida State to get there and we played a good game against Stanford and we had a challenge against Rice. But um, kind of like we always talked about in the tournaments, not going to and out. And we knew like we could play with and beat anybody at that point. So it was just a matter of getting out there and, and doing it. And in that case, it was an elimination game. So we wanted to just keep playing and stay there, you know, in the World Series as long as we could. Yeah. Oh. Sean, Sean, it's amazing to me, too, that these guys, I knew that the guys that I went to school with were bright. But Solman mentioning that it was the fourth out of fifth game we played. And I didn't I didn't know any of these details. The number one. <laughs> I mean, I didn't. It's incredible. These guys are so smart. I will say that I had to go back and check out on some like, I was literally listening to the game five minutes before I jumped on this call. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but I mean, you get to that 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 point of the season in the the teams that this year, you know, you get to Omaha and, and every year, like the teams that are still playing, you're gonna be playing top ranked teams every game. You know, and for us it happened to be three games against number one Florida State and then against a good Stanford team and then against Rice, even though they had lost, they had been moved up to number one. So, you know, at that point, it's like you can't play anybody any better, and we beat some of them. So it was just a matter of going out and playing the best we could, and we knew we could do it. Yeah. Well, and to your points, you know, like I, I've listened to, to to some of those games as well since I, you know, dug them up and, and found them. And I was listening to that first Stanford game, which I don't think I had ever listened to since then. But, you know, you lost a one-run game. You guys had 10 hits in wow. that game just you know couldn't quite string right. you know get a string of things going javi had the the home run yeah. in that game to get you on the scoreboard and you know you're right in there and that's jeremy yeah. guthrie yeah. you know was a first round draft pick you know both of these guys that, that you you faced in in succession were you know big league pitchers first round draft picks so you didn't go up against any slouches that's for sure that's crazy i didn't realize we had 10 hits you know um you know, we gave them everything that they that they had too. You know, and it wasn't it was a close ball game. I do think I was a little bit of a deer in the headlights. At, at, <laughs> at the game. I mean, it was. You know, I mean, and also, you know, think about this too, guys. I mean, I don't know if this crossed your mind at all, but playing on national television. You know, I mean, that was something that was new for all of us. You know, really, yeah. and, and that was pretty big too. So, yeah, all right, cover games leading up to it like they do now, and that was Very really true. what you had to get there to really be on the national stage and. You're right. The whole atmosphere, national TV, I'm sure, you know, it did that first game made it a little tougher. Second game, we could just more relax and play. Yeah. So let's go back. We're going to go through. I've got seven clips here that we're going to uh, to get through and we'll kind of, you know, pause it down and and talk a little bit about each one. So here we are. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. Notre Dame trailing Rice three to two in this elimination game. June seventeenth, two thousand two, at the College World Series, and uh, here is how the inning starts. 
left-handers still on the mound for Rice. There are a pair of right-handers warming up right now for the number one ranked Owls in the bullpen down the right field line. Paul Maneri having a final chat with Joe Thaman before Joe steps into the batter's box. It's Thaman from the ninth spot in the order, then Steve Stanley and Steve Solman. Notre Dame trailing 3-2. to two. The Irish have come from behind 21 times to win this year. Can they do it for a 22nd time? They lost by a run to Stanford in their first game of the College World Series in 45 years Saturday afternoon by a final of 4-3. to three. Rice is here after a 2-1 to one loss to Texas. But now the Irish are down to their final three outs. Called strike to Joe Thaman, 0-1. Joe is 0-3 today, has grounded out twice, and has struck out. Crowder into the windup, and the pitch to Thaman. Breaking ball for a strike, 0-2. Joe grounded out to second base to end the second. He struck out starting the fourth. Grounded out to first for the second out of a 1-2-3-6. The 0-2 breaking ball chopped to first. Taken by Sinisi on a bat hop. He races to first to get the out. One away. Okay, so that's how the inning starts. Again, Joe is the number nine batter. Steve Stanley back at the top of the order. Solman and then Brian Stavisky if anybody gets on. And I should mention now, you know, Talking about the pitchers, Justin Crowder, uh, he came in in relief. Their their starting pitcher, Philip Umber, who was a first-round draft pick the next year and actually pitched in the clinching game of the 2003 College World Series, he really struggled early on. Didn't have a lot of control. Walked some guys. I believe he hit a batter. W- what did you guys see from Umber in his, I think it was two and two-thirds innings on the mound? Well, he threw incredibly hard. You know, we knew – going in that they had uh, the two big horses at the top. And, you know, really our pers- from our perspective, it was we got to get on base, rattle them a little bit, get to them early. And um, I thought the guys did a fantastic job. I struggled that entire game getting on base, but I think everyone on the team, you know, really, really responded well to that challenge. And, you know, it was, uh, we, again, we gave him all he could handle. And I think that we saw a ton of pitches and that probably – contribute him to have him having to come out of the game. Yeah. I think, I think that uh, was the biggest piece is us just putting up good at bats. Um, you know, personally, although Crowder had had a ton of success that year and hadn't given up many, many runs at all. I don't, I don't know if he'd given up a run in, in the, in the, uh, in the tournament, but uh, I mean, he was the type of pitcher that I enjoyed hitting against you know i'm sitting there just slicing balls slapping balls the other way <laughs> just waiting for a change up or something um so i it was it was definitely more comfortable for me than a guy up there throwing 98 or 96 whatever humber was throwing at that point in time yeah. um so i think just those 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 good ab's early on um making sure we saw a ton of pitches and then trying to get to to uh a pitcher that at least for me was a little bit more in my comfort zone was was critical yeah i think good at bats and then the you know, that we, we got a couple runs on the board um, and our pitching and in, in defense to hold them to three, you know, and keep the game close. So I think that that was the biggest thing is that we were still right in it at the end um, where it wasn't a real huge comeback that we had to try to, you know, to mount. Um, so I, definitely their whole team, like, like I said, at that point, they're all going to throw hard or, th- or throw strikes or be really good. And, you know, we knew like, he, he what I remember is he threw hard and and I think that you know I think I may have uh, had a, a strikeout or two or grounded out and I remember I wasn't having the best game hitting um, but it was tough they were good and yeah. and what was the good thing was that we had good at bats and we got a couple runs and we were right in the game all the way till the end you know and where we had that final chance Brian where we are right now again there's there's one out base is empty you're down by a run so Stanley and Solman coming up for you to come to the plate, one of these two guys has to get on base, obviously. So what are you what what's kind of your thought process at that point with Stanley coming up to the plate? Well, for me, it, it's just we're down one. We we just gotta get a run to tie it to keep the game going. You know, I wasn't really thinking about winning it or or I was just thinking about how can we get a run to tie it. And you know, if you need to get a run and, and have a couple guys to hit in front of like you know, between Stanley and Solman, I knew like we were going to go down swinging. If they get us, like it's with our best. So, um, for and I was just thinking of if one of them gets on base, I'm going to get up. 
and I haven't had that great a game, so I'll have another chance to maybe do something to help us. Um, but it, it was more of just let's see who, if one of these guys or both can get on base and, you know, let the, the inning play out here. But that's kind of what I was thinking is that, yeah, I'm going to get up, but someone has to get on base first. There's like a thousand points of uh, on base percentage coming up in front of you, though. So, <laughs> like right. you said, you've got a pretty good shot of somebody of one of these two. You know, Steve's. You know, like I said, Solman's batting seven fourteen. Stanley's got a you know an above five hundred on base percentage all year. I think all three of you guys did for that matter. But so let's go now. There's one out, bases empty, and here comes Steve Stanley, Notre Dame's All American leadoff batter, stepping into the batter's box at Rosenblatt Stadium. For the ninth inning, and Steve Stanley coming up. The All-American 0 for 4 today. Steve needs just one at-bat to reach 1,000 for his career, but more importantly, he just wants to get on right now. He represents the tying run with Notre Dame trailing 3-2 to two with one out and nobody on in the bottom of the ninth inning. Stanley grounded out in his first two at-bats. He's flied out in his last two. Thinking about a bunt, it was a high fastball. It's a strike, and... They're trying to say Stanley was out of the batter's box. They appealed to third, and the umpire said no. Kevin Doherty, the third base umpire, 0-1, or 1-0, rather, to Stanley. They're actually appealing that he went around, so it's 2-0. As I said, the important thing right now is just that Stanley gets on. Third baseman, Hunter Brown, up in front of the bag. 2-0 the count to Stanley. Steve takes a fastball inside, and it's 3-0. Three straight balls to Steve Stanley. 3-2, to two, Rice on top of Notre Dame with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning. The 3-0, fastball in there at the belt, 3-1. and one. Steve Solman and Brian Stavisky right behind Steve Stanley. Notre Dame has scored just twice. They've managed just six hits today. 3-1, fastball for a strike, and the count now full. All right, so we go from 3-0 to start the at-bat, and the next thing you know, it's a full count. So uh, how quickly does your mindset change there, Mr. Stanley? Oh, goodness. I mean, you know, you can tell. <laughs> so I, I had forgotten that I even tried to bunt the first pitch. I mean, yeah. you know, when, you, when you've gone 0 for 4 in a game, and now you're facing a guy who hasn't given up a run, like Soli said, in the entire tournament, he's got a pretty good slider. He's lefty-lefty for me. So, And he's he's what we call a thumber. You know, he's like – you know, 84, 86, he doesn't throw very hard. Maybe his fastball was 89, but but uh, breaking stuff was definitely trying to get you out in front of the ball. So um, I'm thinking, especially when he goes 3-0, I'm going, okay, I'm getting on base. We got the next <laughs> – we got the best guys coming up. I'm on base, so it's all we, all we need is a chance, you know. Right. And um, then he goes strike one, and, and of course, I'm, I don't even have to look down at third base. It's a take. It's a take all the way, right? I'm not, <laughs> not going to hit the ball out of the park. You know, there's no. So I'm not even. I don't even have to look down. I mean, he gives me the take sign, but it's you know I already knew it. I was going to take it anyway. So <laughs> most guys, you know, you know, you get in that situation if it's Solman or if it's Stavisky up there. I want you hitting a double or a home run, right? I'm up there. And, hey, get on base, take another strike. And in my case too, like I knew that he didn't throw hard enough to be able to throw one by me. So I was just as good with two strikes as I won with was was with one. So that's that's where I was at. You know, we get well, to three two. Yeah. And Paul Maneri told me that, you know, it gets to three two and then you kind of step out and like you're cinching up your you know your your batting gloves and he's like, all right, this is gonna be good. You know, he it's is that kind of is that kind of the, it sounds like that's sort of the feeling that you had, you know, anybody, anybody who knows me knows that, that that is, that is what I was made for those situations. I mean, like I, so a lot of guys, they'll struggle in situations like that because it's more nerve wracking for whatever reason. I just kind of, that's the stuff I love. And so when, when it was that situation, it's almost like, okay, here we go. Right. And we're, when we're ready. So, so I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But I can promise you, if I was going to go down, I was going down swinging, and I and I was not going to let him throw one by me. So, in the meantime, you know, again, you've got Solman on deck. Stavisky is in the hole over there, and again, this is a guy at, at this point. You've seen him a couple times, and now he's already thrown what five pitches 
to Stanley, you know, what, are, are, what do you, what are you seeing from him? Are you feeling, you know, pretty good, but, you know, based on the fact that you've seen a lot of pitches from him already at that point. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I was feeling good. I, like Steve said, it got the three Oh and I was like, okay, Steve's going to get on base. And I, I mean, it didn't really change the situation for me much. Like I was, I knew I was going to have an important at bat no matter what, whether there was nobody on, whether there was two guys on, it was either going to be a sack bunt or, um, or for me, it was just going to be about putting the ball in play and, and putting the ball in play hard. Yeah, and I think then to get to me, you know, what I'm thinking is I'm watching these guys and, and watching the pitches, and we'd already faced him once, I think, or maybe twice from when he came in. So, you know, that definitely helped, too, that it wasn't the ninth inning, and this is the first time we're seeing this guy as, like, a closer, Yeah, is that, that we're facing him the sec, you know second or even third time, you know, in the game, and, you know, we're starting to get more comfortable, you know, with seeing his pitches and knowing what he, what he had. And it, it's it's interesting too because I think in a typical situation, if he if he wasn't going to be facing three out of four lefties, his first four batters, yeah, they would have gone to the bullpen. You know, right, they, right. It, I think they said at the beginning they had two righties warming up, and I'm sure. I think one of them, so one of them was was Ardsma, right? Was I mean, he had yeah, a exactly. long career, you know, and yeah, yeah. he threw like a hundred. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really grateful I was surrounded by a bunch of lefties in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Great point. Never really, you know, even thought of it that way. But there were, yeah, two right-handers warming up down there. Okay, so it's 3-2 and two to Steve Stanley. Again, Notre Dame is down by a run, bottom of the ninth inning, and uh, the base is empty. Let's uh, let's see if this at-bat ends up. It, it just might have been good. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Five Saturday afternoon. But is now just two for nine at this College World Series. Three and two the count. Crowder from the windup. Payoff pitch is going to be fouled back and out of play. So Stanley stays alive by fouling off the three and two pitch from Crowder. Crowder, who transferred to Rice from TCU just prior to this year. Three and two to Stanley. The line from Crowder. Another payoff fan. Another ball fouled back and out of play on the third base side. Steve Solman in the on-deck circle. The wind picking up again as it zips out toward left center field. College World Series in Omaha. 3-2, to two, Rice on top of Notre Dame with two outs and nobody on in the bottom of the ninth. Another payoff to Stanley. This one getting back to right center field. Turn on the Jets, Steve Stanley. Back to the wall it goes. Stanley rounding second, heading for third. Steve Stanley will slide in safely with a one-out triple. And Notre Dame has the tying run at third base as Steve Stanley gives Paul Maneri a high five as he gets in there. So that picture, for those watching on the YouTube stream, that picture of Paul Maneri hugging Steve Stanley, that is, like, I, I went, you know, and I tried to find the you know pictures of you guys that I could that is the actual aftermath of the triple at third base and uh Steve you know, Paul looked like he was holding on to you for dear life at that point <laughs> I, I think both of us were kind of in shock at the moment you know I, I I I don't know how many triples I had that year maybe two maybe two maybe one I don't know but it was one of those deals where uh you hit a ball and you just you, you kind of don't know where it's going to go or how it's going to end up. And you, once you see it get in the gap, I mean, you if you watch the clip, I'm rounding first base and I, I feel like I'm floating on air, you know, just because I'm going, wow, you know, we got a chance here. That ball, right. the ball's down, you know, and of course, I wasn't even thinking about two, you know, for me, I was thinking if I can get on third base, Stevie's definitely going to get me in. There's no question about it. So, and it was a missile as well. Like it wasn't that high, but it was a missile yeah. to right center field, just the way it it took off. Yeah, well, and the thing about it was he got me out in front. It was one of those deals where I hit yeah. off. I hit I hit the pitch off my front foot because uh, the way I hit, I had a double tap, and so if a guy threw a breaking ball a lot of times if I wasn't balanced I'd hit off my front foot in that case it was it was a pitch on the outside corner I was just trying to get my bat on it and it happened to be that they were playing they were they're obviously playing their center fielder in left center field because you know for a guy like me especially thinking I'm gonna get two strikes I'm gonna go the other way and it just happened to be kind of placed perfectly and so um 
Yeah, I mean, when I when I came into third base, <laughs> he grabbed onto me, and I think we were both like, we, we were both kind of thinking, man, we got a, we got a shot here. We we got a shot. Do you remember anything he said when you got in there? <laughs> you know what? That's funny. No one's ever asked me that question. I don't remember. I mean, it was, it was like it was one of those things where we were both kind of in shock, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, you're just kind of in the moment and. And that for me was the loudest I'd ever, you know, I'd ever heard uh, yeah, in a stadium yeah. that we played in. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And true story, a few years ago, someone I kind of, you know, somewhat familiar with, but didn't really know. They they knew who I was. They walk up to me, and the first thing out of their mouth was, "Turn on the jet, Steve Stanley." <laughs> and he was he was listening, you know, driving down the road you know, while that game was going on. I thought that was that was pretty cool that he remembered that line because this has only been, you know, maybe like five, six years ago, something like that. So, you know, that that had been a while. But uh, so so he was listening and, you know, there were there were other people, uh, you know, who have told me, uh, you know, they were listening to to what, you know, might be coming up here in uh, in just a minute. But I thought that was pretty cool to hear that. Now, so now, Solman, you're coming up. One out, tying run. At third base, you're 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 coming up to the plate. We're gonna get to that in just a second. I just realized that I wanted to talk real quickly about something else first, and and you'll hear it here in this clip. And what has become his 1,000th career at bat at Notre Dame with a triple in his biggest at bat of his career. Notre Dame facing elimination, trailing three to two. With one out of here in the bottom of the ninth inning, and now Steve Stanley at third base for the Fighting Irish, representing the tying run and the best batter of the NCAA postseason, Steve Solman, coming up with a chance to bring him in. Rice will bring in the infield, and how big now does that suicide squeeze with the runner thrown out at the plate become? Okay, so that's what I want to talk about. Rice's attempted suicide squeeze, and Solman, you're the only infielder of the crew. And I had kind of forgotten about that, you know, until I, you know, I heard this a couple of years ago that, yeah, Rice tried to squeeze home an insurance run in the top of the ninth inning. You guys got him out at the plate. Do you, what, what do you remember about that? I mean, I, I just remember the fact that we never had a bunt play ever at, at Notre Dame. And it was always like, <laughs> Hey, get the out at first, just get the out at first. No so way. I'm like, yeah, like it was, that's, that's just the way we did things. I was like, yeah, yeah. all right. Um, and so I was just heading over to first as all, like, I, I guess it wasn't surprising that they would try to squeeze one across and, and, and you, yeah. So I, the bunt goes down and I do, I remember it being like a hard bunt. Like it was not a great bunt. Like it went right. literally right back to JP. Yep. Um, but I was still going to first assuming like, all right, we always get the out at first, but if there's ever a time not to try to get the out at first that was it and and i think that was a part of coach maneri's trust in us like i think he always just knew if there was a situation where getting out at first didn't make sense and and there was a chance to take that we were good enough ball players smart enough ball players to make that decision um so you know it didn't shock me that jp made the play uh it definitely didn't shock me that paul was put Paul O'Toole was putting his entire body in front of home plate <laughs> to not I'm even let, not even let that that runner from third score. Um, but it was big. I do rem- like it was huge. Like to go into the dugout down just one run as opposed to two. That you know, the crooked number just seems a little bit more difficult to to stomach yeah. when you when you're going into the dugout and, and it's your last step at. Absolutely. But again, now okay, so you're coming up. Stanley's at third base with one out you were 20 for 28 in the regional and super regionals that's combined uh, you know so going into omaha 20 for 28 in the tournament H- had had the baseball had it ever looked that big in your life i, I can only imagine never before never since uh <laughs> although it didn't look like once we got to omaha though it didn't look quite as big uh a little blurrier huh? yeah yeah a little smaller um but it, uh, yeah, it was for me. One, I wasn't necessarily thinking that Steve would be on third. Like he, I, I wasn't expecting a triple. I was expecting like, okay, he's gonna either get on, 
but again, it didn't really change my, my thought process except for that. Now I just have a lot of other ways that I can get him in. And I just need to make sure that if I get a pitch to hit that I don't let it go by and, and have to look down at third and see coach Maneri like shaking his head. (laughs) Oh, you let a fastball go by. Like, what are you doing? Uh, (laughs) So I, uh, I mean, he stressed, he stressed getting runners in from third with less than two outs more Uh than anybody I'd played for. Um, so it was more just, okay, take a deep breath, slow down the heart as much as you can, and and just um, – and, and, like, sit back. Again, the same thing with Steve was saying. Like, I I was confident that Crowder wasn't able going to be able to, like, blow one by me. And, you know, so he ended up throwing me a changeup, and and I was lucky I was playing with the metal bat. Yep. And, and I was able to, to get a good piece of the barrel on it, and it, and it got up the middle. We'll hear that here in just a second. But, Brian, you know now that you're going to get to bat, unless something absolutely just catastrophic happens with one out and Solman coming up, you know you're going to get to hit. You're stepping into the on-deck circle behind him. So what's what's kind of your thought process over there? Well, I guess I'm probably thinking, you know, that, you know, Steve's going to get get him in. You know, this is probably going to be a, a tie game. Um, pressure's kind of falling off a little, you know, from going to – you know, hey, this this is going to be, you know, a tough situation, or it might be two outs, and and we're still down one, and now it's a, a chance to come up there and, you know, the, with the way Steve was swinging, you know, he's going to have a good at bat, and he's probably going to get him in. So, you know, if it's tied, then what do I do? You know, right. so that's kind of where I went. I went from thinking like, okay, I'm probably going to get up maybe with two outs and have to try to tie or, or maybe win the game versus now it's, Hey, you know, we're in a great position, you know, Steve's going to knock, you know, Steve in and, you know, and then at that point it's tied and then I'll see what I can do, you know, after that. So right. it definitely just getting that triple and getting that on third base with one out, it just was so huge in changing the at bat for Steve to have more options and probably feel more relaxed and the same for me being on deck after him. All right, so Notre Dame's down three to two still. Steve Stanley standing at third base after that triple, and here comes Steve Solman. Wide one and oh. Solman one for three. Steve Stanley with the fourth triple of his All American senior campaign now at third with the Irish down three to two. Solman lines it up the middle, and the game is tied. Here comes Steve Stanley. Solman brings him home. We're tied at three in a brand new ball game. Steve Solman with a 47th RBI of his sophomore season. Links the All-American Steve Stanley three to three. And now the winning run at first base for Notre Dame with Brian Stavisky coming up. Two straight hits by Stanley and Solman. A triple to right center field and Solman with a line shot up the middle to bring home Stanley. And again, this guy had locked you guys up for the, you know, for the better part of five innings. And then in the span of three pitches, a triple RBI single, boom, the game is tied now in the ninth inning. Uh, any questions, Steve, biggest hit of your life, Solman? Uh, no. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's a no question right there. Um, yeah. Like I said, I would, and I wasn't a guy that was, I was just trying to put the ball and play hard. I wasn't, I'm not a guy that's like, Hey, I need to hit a fly ball here. Right. Um, infield was in, but still, um, was just trying to, to hit the ball in a line somewhere. And, and, uh, and I felt comfortable, you know, I'd had, I'd put up some good at bats against Crowder prior to that and just wanted to, to focus. Stanley, yeah. what, what was that dugout like when you got back to the dugout, when you tie it up? Insane. I mean, we were, it was electric, man. I mean, the crowd, to me, there was no doubt in my mind we were winning that game. You got Brian coming up, Stevie's on first. Now, all the momentum shifted. And I didn't think Brian was going to hit one out. I mean, like, that was, you know, that wasn't on my mind. But you're thinking, okay, all the momentum. Now, we only got one out. We got our best power hitter coming to the plate. We're in a great position. And yeah, I think all the, everybody felt that way. All of our fans felt that way, and definitely within the dugout, um, 
everything changed. I mean, talk about momentum changing that. Yeah, that, that was the right. momentum, momentum changer. And so, Brian, you just talked about your, your thought process, getting ready for your bat and all that stuff. And so now it's a tie game and you've got the winning run at, at first base. So it, it, is your approach any different than, you know, if you're, if you're coming up and you're still down by a run, I guess. Well, I think, I think that, you know, I'd like to say it'd be the same, but um, it definitely, you know, helped get in that run and then tie in the game when you go up and it's tied already, you can be a little more confident and aggressive, you know, that you can do something to now try to win the game, you know, uh, versus that you still have to try to tie it, tie it or win it. So, you know, that was, you know, like for me, almost a, a relief. But at the same time, I feel like, like I said, I think I was 0 for 4 at that time, a couple strikeouts, I think a fielder's choice, yeah. ground out. And, you know, we tied the game, we were back in it, and I was due to have a good at bat. So for me, that's what it was more about was, you know, I wasn't thinking about, you know, like a home run or, or anything. I was thinking, like, he's on base. We'd already had, like, at the end of the Big East tournament, I hit a ball down the left field line yeah. and he scored from first. That's that right. Same guy at first base. Yeah. So there's lots of ways, you know, that, that, you know, I could get a hit and the next guy could get a hit and we could get him in. So once we tied it, it definitely was a relief to have that pressure off that we're still playing no matter what. And now we can go be more aggressive and try to try to win the game right now uh, while we had the momentum going, you know, and, and that's what we ended up doing. Solman at first base, 3-3 three, three game now. Here comes Stavo. As he taps it back behind the plate. Ryan is 0 for 4 today with a couple of strikeouts. He reached on a fielder's choice and scored back in the third inning. He grounded out to shortstop in his last at bat of the seventh. Solman at first will have a tough time trying to run with a left hander out there. Stavicki fouls it back and out of play on the third base side, 0 and 2. Andy Bushy in the on deck circle for Notre Dame. Stavisky playing without that face mask that he's worn all year here today. 0-2 the count to him, and continuing to blow toward left center. 3-3 three to three the score. Steve Solman with a lead at first for the Irish, and Crowder now steps off. Steve Stanley with a one-out triple to right center field, scoring two pitches later as Steve, Stan uh, Steve Solman lined him home. Stavisky takes a fastball high, 1-2. and two. Okay, so 1-2. and two. He went with a fastball, uh, and I'll get, I'll get to that here in a second, but I mentioned that football face mask you had been you you were hit by a pitch i believe against west virginia like what late march something like that and you had fractured a bone you know so you'd been wearing actually a football face mask and that was the first time since then that game the first time that you hadn't worn the face mask so just kind of tell everybody the story of why the face mask came off that day well you know like you said it started back you know against west virginia getting hit in the face with a fastball and, um, you know, being Notre Dame and the football school that it is, <laughs> you know, that, that they took my batting helmet and put a quarterback face mask on it. So that way I could come back and play, you know, not risk getting my face hurt or hit again. I could be back playing sooner. So it was definitely different having a football face mask on a batting helmet, but that's how, you know, I was able to come back and, and play and, and, I just kind of got used to it. And at that point, I really didn't need to wear it by the postseason, probably by the Big East tournament or the regional or super regional, you know, but I just got so used to it. And it was kind of a unique thing that I just kept going with it and it kept working, you know, for us as the year went on. So, but um, they were so big on checking equipment, you know, <laughs> at, at Omaha and it started to get a crack from all the times having to pull it like pull it out farther to get right. it over my head and ears with the mask on it, it started to crack. So I just decided to, Hey, let's not risk it with me going up and the umpire saying, Hey, your helmet's cracked. So I think I borrowed Brent Weiss's helmet and um, wore that, you know, number 18 instead of 19. And um, so it was something I, I, I didn't, need to wear that mask anymore, but I had been wearing it just because I was used to it and it was kind of good luck. So, but I took it off that day and um, it really wasn't, you know, that big of a, a difference. Um, and I think at that point you're just focused on at bats and yeah. getting the job done and, and, and playing a good game. 
because at that level, you know, you're so focused on the baseball that whether you got a mask on or not, you're not even thinking about it. You're just thinking about hitting the ball, fielding the ball, what, what you're trying to do. So, but that's the story of, you know, with, with that, that season, most of the season wearing that helmet with that football face mask mm-hmm. after getting hit in the face yeah. and wearing it all the way through to the beginning of the World Series. Solman, I mentioned in that last cut, you're at first base and there is a lefty on the mound and you're the winning run as well. Is there any, are you thinking about going at all or, or what's going on there? I wasn't, I don't think I re- was really. Um, I think when you got somebody that, that has so much power, I, I didn't want to like not right. give him the opportunity. And, mm-hmm. and he, it's funny he mentions the Big East tournament because I, I remember thinking about that too because in the Big East tournament I was on first and that's how we won it. He hit one down the left field line and I, I scored from first. So in my mind, I'm just trying to make sure I, I get a good jump. Um, you know, I wasn't I, – I don't think I had any intentions of, of stealing at that point. Yeah. So, Brian, it's one and two, and you, you, it was 0 oh and two. He just went with a fastball up. Earlier in the bat or earlier in the game, uh, you know, obviously one, two is an obvious curveball count, and I think he got you with the curveball earlier for your your strikeout. Are you Are you – pretty much sitting on breaking ball at this point? I think at, at that point, after seeing him a couple at bats and, and I think the first two pitches, the at bat, I think were curve balls that I fouled off or, um, you know, got for strike one and strike two. And then, you know, he came back and tried to hit the outside corner with a fastball. And luckily it was outside, um, you know, but I was looking away and, and, you know, you mentioned in the, the, um, you know, the broadcast about the left or the, the wind kind of blowing out to left, yeah. you know, the wind was, was always a big factor there. And that's, it produced a lot of home runs sometimes to right, sometimes straight out, sometimes to left. And I remember being a lefty and the wind was blown out to left kind of across from right. You know, I wasn't thinking about home runs, but especially when the wind's blowing kind of in your face uh-huh. that you don't think about it. And that's what was such a, like a great thing, like where Steve hit his ball, he hit it hard enough to get in the right center field gap through the wind. And, you know, for me though, back to the, the curve ball, I'm down one, two, he's already thrown me a few curve balls. I'm just trying to think, stay back. But I remember thinking too, though, that that ball, the wind's carrying out to left, left center. Mm. You know, if I can stay back, I can drive one that way mm. is what I was thinking. Like I can hit one hard that way in the gap, uh-huh. or I can even hit one out to, to left center. Yeah. So in a, in, in a, way I was thinking like stay back try to go the other way the wind will help me that way you know if I hit one good so basically that's what I was looking for um you know and he came with it and like Steve was out in front but he got the triple and Solman was a little bit out in front of the change but he hit that hard up the middle and then I got the curveball and was out in front but I'd seen enough and stayed back long enough that that I got it so um you know it's funny how it all played out that we all adjusted and we all made it work three bat three at bats in a row. Yeah. And it's funny how you mentioned, you know, the how the wind changes there at Rosenblatt because obviously it sat on top of that hill. So, you know, the wind was a lot more prominent. And I remember your practice day before the series started, like you guys were just depositing but you know, the ball was just jumping off your bats in the practice day. And then I if like you got to the Stanford game and it's carrying a lot differently that day and the balls aren't, you know, quite flying the same. And then, you know, like you said, you've got a, a, a wind that for a left-hand batter is not necessarily conducive to hitting one out to right field. I got but, a quick uh, story real quick, Sean. Yeah, go ahead. During the batting practice day, coach Mary, I, I, uh, I'm the first one to hit, right? So I go up there and I think I might hit the first one out. <laughs> And, and, he, and he, he stopped and he goes, all right, did you get that out of your system? <laughs> it's like, don't ever try to hit the ball out again. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And then for me too, like I said, I was down with two strikes. And at that point, you know, I was just trying to hit the ball hard. Like, let me just get a, get a good piece of one, uh-huh. you know, after – being 0 for 4 and down to, you know, one one ball, two strikes. You know, at that point, I was just, let me do anything to get the bat on the ball solid here. And, uh, well, turns out you did. We're, we've come to our final cut. I think we all know what's coming up here, but we'll go ahead and play it anyway. Here we go. 
with uh, the score tied three to three against Rice at the College World Series. Four runs this year. That's the second most on this team. He also has eight home runs. Each team with three runs and eight hits. Notre Dame has committed one error. One and two the count to Stavisky. Crowder with the pitch. Breaking ball. Slam to right. That one going back. And it is. Out of the ballpark. Home run. Brian Stavisky. It's the ball game. And the Irish will play for another day. Brian Stavisky rounding the bases. There's pulmonary to greet him. And the fighting Irish will play tomorrow night. Five to three. Notre Dame scores three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. So, uh, Stavo, the, the, the floor is yours. How did it feel coming off your bat? Well, you know, it, it felt awesome, but it almost felt kind of like unreal, you know, that like Steve was saying, and it's funny, like the way he described his triple is exactly how I felt about this home run, that that he hit it and it just went, you know, out to right, right center. And it felt like he was just floating around the bases to get to third. And it was the loudest cheer that he'd ever heard and it was the same for me that you know I I connected and it felt like like nothing because I hit it hit it well but then it goes out and it's like and the game's over we won and I remember thinking like this is the loudest roar I've ever heard (laughs) I'm going around the bases and it feels like I'm not even touching the ground (laughs) and then I, I I get around you know the bases and and coaches at third and then everyone's at home and it, it was definitely the the greatest feeling I've had on a baseball field. And, um, you know, it, it, it won the game and it, it kept us playing for another game. And yep. um, but the, it's funny, like the way Steve described his triple is exactly the same way I felt about this hit with, you know, feeling like, you know, walking it's on air. Going around numb, the bases. Yeah. Yeah. Going numb, like like not like can't believe that it just happened, that I just did that. And, you know, the roar and you know it was almost like a dream you know did that really happen and um and and it was incredible like in the fact in a matter of three batters to go from being down and and almost out to tie game to winning the game and you know and and with to be with this group of guys to pull that off against rice and at omaha you know was the best feeling I've, i've ever had on a baseball field and And that gave us another chance, you know, to keep playing, you know, at least one more game. Stanley and and Solman, obviously you're you're watching from different perspectives. Stanley, you're over in the dugout. Solman is at first base. So when when that ball leaves his bat, what are you guys seeing? Did you think it was gone right away? Yeah. uh, Not only did I think it was gone, I mean, that ball was leaned on. I mean, he (laughs) crushed that thing. So to get one out in the wind to write that day, you had to be, you had to have some hair on your chest and he, (laughs) that ball was struck. So I'm telling you, you know, he, he's, he's kind of underscoring it, but that ball was crushed. So I I always tell the story about Brian's first home run and he hit it when, uh, when we were in Memphis, his freshman year. And I, you know, I was a sophomore and I, and I go, this guy's got different type of power. And then the other story I tell is that always the umpires would go through the line before the game and they would you'd feel the bats and the roundness of the bat so that if you had, if your bat was too flat, they would have to throw your bat out. I think they threw my bat out maybe once in 65 games. They threw Brian's bat out probably 25 times. <laughs> he was hitting with the cricket stick because he, he hit the ball so hard. And um, so, yeah, I mean, he – I was not expecting him to hit a ball out of the park. I was just celebrating that we had tied the game. And then right. all of a sudden now I'm, I'm celebrating, going from celebrating that we've tied it to now he just walked them off. And what an incredible feeling. Yeah, I was – I think going into the A-B, like, I I mean, we all knew Brian wasn't having his best day. And I was like, all right, just put together a good at-bat. Like, let's just put together a good at-B, a good A-B. I think – was it Bushy that was coming up after? Yeah, he was yep. on deck, um, yeah. Yeah, so – Let's just then let's just keep it going. One of the next, yeah. one of the next. Um, and then he hit the ball. And my first thought was like, because it wasn't like he hit a towering bomb. Right. Like it was like I felt like it was 15 feet off the ground the entire way into the stands. <laughs> yeah. So my first 
because I've never hit a ball like that or seen many hit like that. I, uh, my first instinct was like, all right, like make sure you see it down and then get on your horse and see what we can do here. But then as I like, you know, cause I remember turning around and taking a couple big hops, like, okay, where are we going to be? And then I was like, oh, that ball's way, I mean, that ball's <laughs> gone. Like this is, and then it's, um, yeah. I mean, just pandemonium, just pandemonium. From, from my perspective, you know, one, you know, you guys have talked about how the crowd there at the College World Series is so different. And it's obviously a bigger stadium than you're used to playing in in college baseball. And what's what's cool about the way they they did it is each each radio team had its own broadcast booth. So everybody got their own booth, but there was glass, you know, between booths. So you could see the people in the next booth. So I remember, you know, starting off, I'm sitting down, there's some people right. To, I'm sitting like up against the glass to my left and there's some people that I think they were Georgia tech people, if I remember right, who have obviously was also there. And so the ball is hit. And I just remember standing up (laughs) and, you know, as it's going, just because again, the perspective is a little different. So I really, it was like, it was almost like, you know, um, uh, Joe Buck, uh, Jack Buck, you know, with with the with the Gibson home run. I don't believe what I just saw. I didn't say that, but that that was almost my feeling, you know, be, just because that perspective, you know, the way it just kept carrying it again. The you know the the it was not supposed to be a a day conducive to hitting the ball out where Brian Stavisky got it, and it was almost just like my head was exploding. You know when when it happened, so it was it was you amazing. And, you and word form were expressing what we all felt. I mean, that That's... was <laughs> as you got increasingly louder, Sean. To I mean, that was that was exactly how we felt. I mean, you know, you did such a great job of conveying going back and listening to these games, exactly really what the fans were feeling and what we were feeling on the field too. So yeah, it was it was I, when I talked to people about the College World Series experience. Um, I, I, I try to like, there's, there's points where it was like the, the, the Florida state super regional, like there's just something about being in front of whatever, 5,000, 6,000 yeah. mm-hmm. fans that are all cheering against you. Yeah. Right. Like the noise that came in Florida state and just, yeah. it was nonstop, like their chance and all this stuff. And it was, it was just so intense. And then you get to the college world series. And unless you're playing like Nebraska, a lot of it is just like people that are there just because they enjoy baseball. So it's right. like, oh, they don't really have a, a rooting interest a lot of times. And so it's not necessarily as, you know, loud. And But in that inning, it was the loudest I'd ever been at a, at a baseball game. And and um, and that just goes to show that, like, everybody could appreciate that excitement and how much fun and how incredible that was, whether you were – a a Notre Dame fan or a Georgia Tech fan waiting for the next game or or whatever. Brian, it struck me that all three of your home runs in the tournament, you hit one in regionals, one in super regionals leading off the uh, Florida State game, and then that one they were all against left-handers. Yeah, you know, and I think that that's something that, you know, I, I always did well off righties and lefties um, growing up and, and throughout, even after college in my pro career, you know, I, I hit lefties as well, or maybe even better, because I think everyone makes such a big deal about the lefty-lefty matchup or the, the matchups. And I know in pro ball, early in my career, you, the coaches would say like, hey, you know, you got to be able to hit both if you want to stay in the lineup every day mm-hmm. as you move up. And for me, I kind of took that as a challenge of, okay, what do I got to do against lefties? And, um, but I think that, that even before that in high school and in college, maybe I just had a little bit of a focus a little bit more, you know, cause it's supposed to be a tougher matchup mm-hmm. and maybe I just simplified things and, and um, didn't try to do too much. And that one against Florida state, I wasn't expecting that. I just got a good hanging curveball and I swung and it went out to right and it put us off to a good start at, at Florida state, Yep. you know? So in that one in, in Omaha, you know, it was like the last thing I expected. So I think that's, when you're not trying to do something and you're just trying to do what, what you're supposed to with a good swing and hit the ball hard and get a good pitch, then that's what happens. And I think sometimes for me, when it was a lefty pitcher, you know, throughout my career at, at all the levels that it's like, this is supposed to be tougher. I just need to focus and keep it simple. And things usually turned out even better. Stanley and Stavis, you know, I mentioned Crowder, Justin Crowder, the rice 
pitcher. You guys were both drafted by Oakland, and so was he. Did, did, were you guys, either of you, teammates with him in in, uh, in the A's organization? I imagine at some point, it, you know, at least one, if not both of you were. Yeah, yeah we crossed I, time in the spring training. I never played on his team, on his minor league teams, but I always remember, I felt so bad, you know. <laughs> I, I did, I, I did, I felt so bad walking, but he's the sweetest guy, nicest guy, man, you know. I just walked by him. And, you know, we're both thinking the same thing, and I'm definitely not going to go there, and neither is he. And just, hey, how you doing? And we just go, you know, it's like – it's like passing somebody at the water cooler at work and going, this this is awkward. I, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> and so we never we we never did approach. I mean, he was such a he was such a, um, a fantastic pitcher for them. And and so you know it, it that picture that you got on the 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 one with us kind of dogpiling and then right. that, that was. It, you know, it was devastating for him. So as, as much as euphoric as it was for us, I mean. Well, it was unfortunately horrible. for him, you know, again, like I did a lot of Google searches trying to find, you know, some pictures specifically, you know, from that game, if I could. But even for him, that I think is the only photo that came up, you know, other than maybe a headshot or something. And, you know, so it's like. If he Googles his name 20 years later, that's unfortunately, you know, when he's stuck. You know, it's great for you guys, but it's not so great for him. So, that's great. I, uh, that's, that's you know, it is. Go ahead, go ahead Steve, and then I'll, I'll say, go ahead. No, I just, I, I got a funny story about that as well. My brother in law got a new job like six or seven years ago at this company, and he was doing some, it was like a sales job, and there was salesmen all over the country, and he had a training that he had to go to to start it off. And, uh, and he's at this training and he starts to get to know one of these other salesmen that, that, that is new. And it turns out that it was Justin Crowder. And I don't know how the whole, like, I think he mentioned that he played baseball and then he played professionally. He's like, oh, my brother-in-law played baseball. And then and, and, and they got to like, oh, where'd he go? He went, you know, he went to Notre Dame. Oh, no. and, then, and then he was like, oh, no. uh, like, when did he graduate? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm not. A, and then he got to my name and he was like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. I can't get away from this. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing, like you guys, you know, Steve crossed paths with them, Stanley with the, you know, with the spring training and Steve now with the, you know, the connection from work and, my first place I played was Vancouver and, you know, Steve uh, Stanley went on and um, I think you started out in Modesto or Visalia, right? Right. right. That first, um, you know, that first season, that first summer, but I went to Vancouver and that's where Justin was. And so he was already there because oh, I, he had left, you know, finished the college season. He had signed, he had gone to Vancouver. He'd been there already. I had waited a little while um, and then late in July, when I signed, I went to Vancouver and all I remember was like thinking how good a pitcher he was. And I, and then I knew he was going to be on the team. And so some of the other guys that were there, um, remember Brant Colomarino from Pittsburgh? Yeah. He was also drafted and was on the team in Vancouver. And some of these other guys that when I got there and joined the team, like they were all like wondering how I was going to act you know around justin because he was already there and and he was afraid like he was kind of afraid and shy like didn't want to you know like he's like how is this guy gonna be you know is he gonna be like a jerk and just rub it in my face or whatever and, you know so anyway it's just was funny because like like stanley me crowder were all drafted by the a's that year you know and and it plays out that he gets the triple i hit the home run then we were all in the a's organization together and justin and i happened to be on vancouver that summer like the next team we play on, we're on the same team together. So, you know, for me, I just kind of went up, shook his hand and, and like kind of introduced myself, but just said like, you're a great pitcher. I'm glad we're on the same team, you know? And I think like the way I acted kind of helped him like feel a little bit better. And then we were just teammates that summer. And then throughout the time I was with the A's, we were at different levels, but we did play a year in double A together. And he was good. Like he was always good as he moved up through. And and I always remembered that how good he was and how the pitch one pitch could have gone differently yeah. or he could have got me again. So I think that he was afraid of being on the same team with me after what happened. But um, for me, it was, yeah, we got, we won, but that's over, you know, and now we complete be teammates. And I think that helped him 
and because he was still good and he was good with for us in the minor leagues and I really enjoyed getting to know him and playing with him for a couple seasons in the minors. Well, for guys who wrecked this guy's life, you guys are all really good guys yourself. So, <laughs> no, this has been a lot of fun. This is this has been a blast, guys, to get to to do something like this. Like I said, we've never tried anything like this before. It was great to see you uh, at the 20 year anniversary a few months back. And I'll just kind of give you the floor, you know, real quick. If you want to go around the horn again, any any kind of final thoughts before we wrap this up tonight? Well, this is always, every time we get together, it is a highlight for me and just to spend time with you guys and, and to remember those days and to look, you know, I'm a huge college baseball fan now and I love watching where the game has gone. Um, and, you know, I do, I will say that those days, you know, in Omaha uh, and then, you know, even as you guys are recalling times at Florida State and all of those times that we spent together, it was really one of the best times of my life. I'm very thankful that I got to be a part of that and be part of this group. And um, I'm excited. You know, we're getting together in the fall again, so it'll be great to, to see everybody again. Somebody's rocking out. <laughs> Sorry about that. The phone's connected right. to the, the headpiece too. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I was like, sorry, I was like sorry. John's, John's putting my comments to music here, man. Yeah. Like, nice job. That's right. Yeah. You didn't realize I had the producer key, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, and just to build on that, yeah, those, I, I mean, these conversations, such great memories, um, just part of what was an incredible four year run for, for me at Notre Dame. And, you know, I mean, for the best years of my life, for sure, which is, you know, why I'm back here now. It's why I do what I do. Um, so just grateful to, to have these friendships, grateful to have these memories. And, uh, and like Steve said, can't wait to, to get back in the fall and see those guys again. Yeah. And I mean, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years and I'm so glad we had the reunion and most of the guys and most of the staff were back just, you know, a few months ago. Um, you know, or, or just, just a little over a month ago. And, you know, it's been 20 years, but the guys are the same, you know, and that's what is so cool. Like that we can just pick up where we left off. And, but the thing now that guys have families and they've had so many other experiences since then, it's so neat to learn and hear about what they've done since. But at the same time, we always have this, you know, we always have Notre Dame and Notre Dame baseball and this team specifically the college world series. So, you know, it's so great to get back together. The reunion w was a blast and I didn't want to leave that weekend, you know, after being back together with everyone. And it's great that we can talk here again and kind of relive that that last inning against Rice. So and Sean, I really appreciate you digging up the old audio files that you sent to everyone. Oh, no problem. And, and doing this today, you know, to be able to, um, do you know, do something like this. Like we were saying, it's like, who would have thought you could do something like this 20 years ago? Yeah, no you know, kidding. <laughs> and get together on, you know, the computer and, and relive that that time. So, um, you know, it's just a lot has happened in 20 years. But, you know, the cool thing, too, is when you come from an area, probably Steve and Steve, the same thing is that over time you hear about like people that you get to know or friends you make or people that you, you, you knew already. And they're like, yeah, I was here when you hit that home run or I was here when you guys beat Rice. I watched the game. And that was the coolest, that's been the coolest thing for me too, is since then, it's knowing that it was on TV and people could watch all over the country and people from back here, my home area could watch. But here in like that, that was probably one of the best things about it too, was not just doing it together with this group and this team. Um, but even years later, hearing from someone, it's like, yeah, I was watching that game against Rice, you know, and you know, and that's the cool thing is when you hear how many people caught the game or, or followed back then and, yeah. you know, thought it, thought it was, you know, really, really neat. And not just for me, but to see the whole team. So, um, you know, I'm glad we're kind of you doing the reunion and, and reliving it ourselves. But um, but that to me, like that was, was something that was really um like a pleasant surprise that for years after hearing from people back around here, you know, that I got to do something that kind of made the people from my home area proud, you know, and I'm sure for Steve and Steve, the same thing. Yep. 
Well, guys, again, this has been a blast. It's always great to uh, to get to talk to you. It was great to to see you recently, and uh, look forward, hopefully, to uh, to doing. Maybe we'll do something like this again in the future. But uh, you know, it's it's always you know it's 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 my honor to get to have been like a small piece in this whole thing. You know, to get to kind of relive this kind of thing. So it's 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 awesome, guys. Thanks again for doing this, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully in the not too distant future. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Sean. All right. Thanks, Sean.